Hello viewers, welcome to this video. Right, in this video, I'm going to take a look at an another tool called BebCubeCTL. Let me search for BebCubeCTL and bring up the GitHub page. Run kubectl command in web browser. As the project name, as the other uh, tool name says, webkubectl, it's basically running kubectl within your browser. Okay, so what are the use cases? So the things like, let's say you've got a team of like five people and uh, they've got an ER gapped uh, system where they can't install anything they can't install even the basic kubectl command in that case you can have you can nominate one system and a, a server a vm or something where you can install web kubectl and that will act like a gateway so all your team members from their laptop they can connect to this web interface and then run kubectl commands okay so that's that's pretty much to it so there's the there's a diagram here that explains how it all works so let's say you've got a multiple Kubernetes cluster, cluster A, cluster B, and you install webkubectl on a machine, on a node, on a server somewhere, and then your team of members from all their laptops, they can connect to this web interface and then run kubectl commands to interact with the different Kubernetes cluster. All right, so how do we install it? It's just a simple docker run command, right? Let's deploy this, I'm gonna copy that and run that command. So basically we are running docker container web kubectl with the privileged mode in the daemon background sending it to background and we are binding the host port 8080 to the container port 8080 and giving it the name web kubectl so if i do docker ps now there is this container web kubectl all right so if i do net stats there should be a docker proxy yeah docker proxy colon 8080 so now i can go to localhost colon 8080 refresh so that's web kubectl interface so that's a very blank web page the first thing you need to do is you need to add a session you need to create a new session right okay so how do we do that i already have a kubernetes cluster if i do kubectl get nodes kubectl cluster info i've got a two node cluster one master node one worker node and I've already got my cube config file under my dot cube directory. So the config file, that's my cube config file. So we need to import this cube config file into the web cube CTL web interface. Let's do that. So we're going to create a new session and we are going to copy the cube config file. So in my cube, under my home directory, under dot cube directory, there is this config file. So I'm going to select that, give this cluster a name or this session a name. Let's call it my cluster. Save it. So we have one session now. I'm going to connect to that session. There we go. So that's the web browser and that drops us instantly in a kubectl prompt, in a, in a prompt where you can run kubectl commands. Right, I can run kubectl get notes. Yep, kubectl get pods dash a. It's, it's, it's pretty much uh, a kubectl command in your web browser. That's it, right? So um, you can create additional sessions if you've got more Kubernetes cluster. The thing to note here is already you might have noticed there is no authentication for this uh, kubectl. So once you run the web kubectl in your nominated uh, host server, VM or anything that other people can access. So it will be running on port 8080. The Docker container will bind to the host port 8080 and anyone can log into that machine address because now i'm running this on my local machine i'm using localhost but it can be run on any machine and you just type in the address of that machine followed by the port 8080 there's no authentication anyone can log in and uh, once you have created the session anyone access to this interface to this server or 8080 can connect your kubernetes cluster and run commands and uh, depending on how many sessions you want you can create multiple cube config file the one that i've uploaded here is the cluster admin that has got all the privileges basically so anyone logging into this web kubectl command sorry web kubectl web interface will be able to run any commands all right let's go back to the documentation and let's see what else we can do with it so when you're running the docker run command you can pause 
an extra environment variable, some of the environment variables to change the behavior slightly. For example, this welcome banner, it says welcome to webkubectl, try kubectl minus minus help. So that's the banner that gets printed when you log into the kubectl um, for the first time. Okay, so connect, sorry, not for the first time. Every time you log into the session, you get greeted by this web banner. So that's the one that you can change by passing in the this environment variable and you can customize whatever you want uh, using that welcome banner environment variable again if you scroll further down um, what you can actually do is for authentication there is this uh, gotti that you can use there's a how to but I'm not going to go deep into that because anyway I'm not going to use this tool and I just came across this tool while I was searching for something else so I thought uh, it would be a good idea to show this uh, to you guys so some of you might find it useful but anyways I'm not going to be using this one but if you are in a production uh, make sure to set up some form of authentication and encryption by default the way we have deployed we're running docker container on my local machine so docker PS. So we are running this locally on our machine and the connection between this docker container where webkubectl is running any machine in my home network connecting to this my laptop port 8080 is also un unencrypted. So what you can do is to set up SSL TLS again there is this documentation on how to do it which I'm not going to do in this video. Uh, the other thing that you can do is you can put a, a web proxy like nginx in front of this webkubectl so you can set up your normal authentication stuff uh, self-signed certificates and all sort of production layer in front of this webcube ctl you can do that if you want if you fancy doing that but to me i'm not going to be using this uh tool just wanted to show you guys how it actually works but it might be handy it might be useful uh, for some of you guys that are a very strange network where you can't install anything but you can connect to just this one network which is in the demilitarized zone only that uh, zone that network has got access say for example all these kubernetes clusters are in a different network and the only machine that can access your kubernetes cluster is this machine here and then you normally SSH to this machine and then connect to these clusters so in this case we don't have to SSH because this is a web application, a simple web application running on port 8080 as a Docker container, which you can connect from any of your other laptop that can, that's in the same network or that has, uh, that can connect to this uh, machine. All right. Right. That's it for this video. And I will see you all in my next video. Until then, keep learning and keep on learning. Bye-bye.